Hey, welcome back to the series that we've been doing on Sour. I've been going track by track to see if I can find a deeper meaning with each of the songs. And today we're on the next track on Sour, which is titled Enough For You. We're coming off the heels of Good For You, and the titles sound very similar to me, considering Enough For You, Good For You, kind of seems like it's always about the other person. So I'm curious to see if it'll be as upbeat as Good For You, but then again, I kind of don't think that's going to be the case because I feel like it would have been probably more of a massive hit, but I haven't heard this one yet, so making me lean more towards not something crazy, but let's see where it goes. Um, I do also want to apologize for not being super here in the series. I do want to finish this album. I just kind of got sidetracked with some other projects. Um, and I did listen to Guts, so it feels weird going back, and I kind of did this in a really bad order. So again, I'm, I apologize for my ADHD brain being everywhere, but let's just get straight into this one. you'd like me more Ooh. if i looked like the other prom queens i know that you loved before tried so hard to be everything that you like just for you to say you're not the compliment type Ooh, this is like some deep cuts already that said i wore makeup when we dated because i thought you'd like me more if i looked like the other prom queens that i know you loved before tried so hard to be everything you like just for you to say you're not the compliment type. Wow. I guess the makeup line here is kind of talking more about vanity and how the person that she was with only cared about those types of things and really wasn't looking beyond the person's looks and that she felt a weird pressure to kind of keep up with maybe his expectations or this could be in her head a little bit where she's competing she's comparing herself to the other person um i'm not saying it's all her fault but i do think maybe there's also we'll have to keep listening to kind of see if it was more something that the other person put on her or was it something that she came up with because it was kind of like a a feeling that she got pressured into you know um tried so hard to be everything you like just for you to say you're not the compliment type that's the reason why I was kind of thinking maybe it was something that she built up more in her head because if he would be the one to ask her to wear makeup and do these things, I would assume that he would compliment her when she did it right. And that's not trying to sound mean, I'm saying like if she, if she did exactly what he wanted her to do, you would think that would warrant the compliment. So it kind of makes me think that she felt this weird pressure to compete and then when she did, she really got nothing out of that. Um, I, I think this person still has some sort of manipulation over her though, because uh, I don't remember which track it was in Sour already, but she said, I love, I'll miss the roller coaster because it's all I've ever had, but it's just constant ups and downs. So I could definitely see that playing a part in this as well. I know how you took your coffee and your favorite songs by heart. I read all of your self-help books so you'd think that I was smart. Stupid, emotional, obsessive, little me. Okay. I knew from the start this is exactly how you would leave. You found someone more exciting the next second you were gone. You left me there crying and wondering what I did wrong. Ooh. You always say I'm never satisfied, but I don't think that's true. Cause all I ever wanted was to be enough for you. No! Oh my Oh um, that had so much to go through. I knew how you took your coffee. <laughs> I know how you took your coffee and your favorite songs by heart. I read all of your self-help books, so I think so you think I was smart. Stupid, emotional, obsessive little me. I knew this from the start. This is exactly how you'd leave. Um, this is definitely something that I feel like she built up in her head a little bit, um, because she's doing the things that she thinks this person will like. Because she's studied this person in a sense, it kind of makes me think that maybe she had a crush on this person longer than the person either was with her or had a crush on her. So she kind of learned this person in order to be what he wants or enough for what he wants. Um, so she kind of finds herself in a predicament because she's almost not really holding her true self in this relationship. And I feel like that's also what maybe caused some rifts in it because she's not even really being herself. She's trying to be what this person wants. Um, and she even kind of calls herself out on that and calls her a stupid, emotional, obsessive little me. 
Uh, I think there's, but I do think there's a sentiment of love there because like she's only doing that because she's so probably in love with this person. So I think it has some sort of like sweet aspect to it, but I think that also comes with like, as you become more mature in yourself, in your confidence and in your own relationships, that you arrive that you don't need to change yourself for other people. But it, this I'm sure served as like a lesson to not conform to other people's whims, if that makes sense. Uh, you found someone more exciting the next thing you were gone. You left me there crying, wondering what I did wrong. You always say I'm never satisfied, but I don't think that's true because all I ever wanted was to be enough for you. So this person did move on, which we kind of know that from a lot of the songs on Sour, like Driver's License, Traitor, especially Traitor, because we know that she said that he didn't cheat, but he moved on very quickly. So it kind of feels like she didn't really have closure from this relationship because she said that you left me crying there wondering what I did wrong. Maybe he just felt like they weren't compatible. And what I can think about is you don't want to date yourself, if that makes sense. Or I'm, maybe that's not everyone's case scenario, but in my head, you would think that you don't want someone so similar to you that you don't have any type of spark. Because I would assume that if Olivia Rodrigo or the narrator is acting in a way trying to be perfect for that person, I'm not sure anyone wants perfect. Um, I'm not saying what he did was valid by doing whatever kind of manipulation he kind of did at one point. I just think that maybe this kind of imploded on itself because this other person, you know, wasn't a good person to be in a relationship with. He has his own set of issues, but she was also coming from a place of not knowing what she wants or what she stands for either. So I think on both sides, there's some sort of like immaturity, but you could also see her growth at least here by calling herself out and kind of saying that, you know, she just wanted to be enough for this person. But at the same time, she kind of sees where she maybe did wrong, I guess you could say. I don't know. This one is a lot to kind of unpack. I was not expecting this. It's beautiful sounding. She sounds amazing. Maybe I'm just not as interesting as the girls you had before. The guy you couldn't know cared less about someone who loved you more. Okay, that's kind of what I just said, I feel like. It said, uh, and, and maybe I'm not as in interesting as the girls you had before. That's, again, causing herself to compete with other people, which I don't know if he put that on her or if she did those self um, correlations with the other person. But I think that if she would have been more herself in that relationship, then maybe she wouldn't be perceived as not interesting. If that, I don't know. This is, oof. I'd say you broke my heart, but you broke much more than that. Now I don't want your sympathy, I just want myself back before you found someone more exciting the next second you were gone. And you left me there crying and wondering what I did. See, that one, that lyric kind of threw a wrench in what I thought the song was about because she said, but God, you couldn't have cared less about someone who loved you more. I'd say you broke my heart, but you broke much more than that. Now, I don't want your sympathy. I just want myself back before you found someone exciting. So maybe she's coming at this. I, maybe she's coming at this from a point of view of saying that she kind of lost herself. And now she wants to be her old self again, like all too well. So maybe my theory still works. Maybe she really changed herself to the point where she didn't recognize herself in this relationship. And it still ended in heartbreak or him finding someone different. So she's maybe looking in the mirror saying, you know, look at all the things I did for you that I thought you wanted and it still didn't work out. I need to find who Olivia is or the narrator, whoever you want to say. So maybe it does make sense. Maybe, I, maybe I'm onto something. Well, you always say I'm never satisfied, but I don't think that's, that's true. Cause all I ever wanted was to be enough Don't you think I loved you too much to be used and discarded? Don't you think I loved you too much to think I deserve nothing? Don't tell me you're sorry, boy, feel sorry for yourself Cause someday I'll be everything to somebody else Aww that had so much emotion in her singing it. Wow. 
I feel like it's been a long time since I heard a song that really had that kind of raw emotion. Um, the subject matters aren't the same, but I really felt that type of way when I listened to a song called You're Losing Me by Taylor Swift. It felt very raw, like this one. Man, this feels more raw to me than Traitor. Um, but it said, Don't you think I loved you too much to be used and discarded? Don't you think I loved you too much to think I deserve nothing? But don't tell me you're sorry, feel sorry for yourself, because someday I'll be everything to someone else. That's actually a really nice sentiment. I like that this is going in the right direction. Um, to feel like you're used and discarded makes me think of, again, All Too Well, where she says, um, I'm trying to remember the lyrics, but till we were dead and gone and buried. Um, it kind of has the same sentiment of how she felt used, like she was a piece of paper lying here. Um, it just feels like someone used you and you don't feel like they ever liked you because of the way that they treated you towards the end of that relationship. Um, but, I, I, but again, I do like that she's saying that she'll be everything to someone else. The things that you didn't like or the things that I did to keep this relationship abreast. Like, the things that you hate is going to be someone else's, like, saving grace. I think that I am so excited. Aww. Good. so good. And not for you, no, nothing's enough for you. Okay, so as we just heard at the end, it says, because all I ever wanted was to be enough, but I don't think anything could ever be enough for you. You're never satisfied. It's not me, it's you. It's, she's finally realized that, look what I did. Again, like I changed myself for you and you didn't even care. And like, you say I'm boring or I don't do enough things, but maybe you're the problem. <laughs> uh, that you'll never be satisfied because you found someone more exciting, but maybe how long is it until that person's no longer exciting? Um, especially if you feel like you're being pressured to change for this person. So he finds someone new, wants new things from them, and then when they do that and conform, it gets too comfortable and then he leaves. Or something along those lines, I can definitely see that playing apart on both sides for sure but overall this was a great track i think this was one of my favorite sour tracks it was so raw so emotional but so honest i really love uh some of the backgrounds on these because it literally looks like you're opening a page of a diary and i felt like i just sat through a diary excerpt like in the best possible way i really really liked this one so um thank you for watching let me know what you think of the song let me know what you think of this relationship do you think that the narrator or Olivia's side did have some comparisons that maybe she like kind of created in her head? Or do you kind of think it's more one-sided? Let me know your thoughts. I'd love to know. Um, but thank you again, and I'll see you in our next video.